Okay, we're finishing up the last part of the 7.03 lesson, End of a Way of Life, and we're going to do this reality is a myth of the Old West activity. You will see a series of statements for each statement, decide whether it reflects the truth and reality of the Old American West or popular imagination and myth. Drag the statement to the left if it represents reality, drag it to the right if it represents myth. The West was a violent and lawless place with shootouts and lynchings commonplace in most towns. Is that fact or fiction? I'm going to say fiction. And we were right. Next. Most cowboys were extremely accurate with their guns and often practiced shooting tin cans off fence railings. Do you think that's fact or fiction? Let's try fiction. Yes, we are right. I love being right. Next question. The enthusiasm many people felt when embarking on their adventures out west, whether mining, farming, or working as a cowboy, soon faded when the reality of life on the frontier set in. Fact or fiction? Let's put fact. Yes, we are correct. Next. Most of the families who homesteaded in the West were happy and healthy, enjoyed the work, and were rewarded with bountiful harvests. Fiction! Next. Both white settlers and Native Americans were responsible for the conflicts and violence between the two groups. Fact or fiction? Let's try fact. So far, so good. Most towns had a single marsh who often dueled with gunmen who were eager to prove they were the new fastest gun in the town. Fiction! The era of the open range when cowboys herded cattle on long drives extended through the 1800s. Fact or fiction? Fiction! Next! The West was a dangerous place and most people carried a gun for protection. Fact or fiction? Uh, this is kind of a tough one. Let's try fiction. Oh, goodness. Still right. Next question. The ranch with its thousands of acres of land, herds of cattle and cowboys, had its origins in Mexico. Fact. Next. It was common for an outlaw to draw two revolvers at once and fire them both at his adversaries. <laughs> like how I just grabbed out my holster there, my imaginary holster. That's fiction, of course. Okay, we're not going to replay it because we did perfectly. Hooray for us. And then to finish it off, the chapter 20 highlights. Let's finish up. So this will help you review for your 7.03 quiz what you'll do for the end of this lesson. The Transcontinental Railroad and other railroads that followed spurred Western settlement and the growth of the national economy. The U.S. government granted land and money to railroad companies. The West attracted a diverse group of people, including immigrants from Russia, Eastern Europe, Germany, Scandinavia, China, Canada, and Mexico, who all shared a desire for economic opportunity and a fresh start. Miners often preceded other settlers in a region, but left as mining towns grew and mining companies brought surrounding land. Mining was common in all parts of California, Nevada, Colorado, the Black Hills of Dakota, Idaho, and Montana. Cattle ranching began on the open ranges of Texas with cowboys herding longhorn cattle. After rail lines were extended into Kansas, ranchers moved their livestock on cattle drives to the newly, to new railheads of Abilene and Dodge City. The era of open range cattle ranching lasted only about 20 years and ended because of overgrazing, severe blizzards, and the fencing off of the range by farmers using barbed wire. The timber industry in the West began in Oregon and Washington as companies logged forests to supply lumber in a growing nation that used vast amounts of wood. Oil was discovered in the 1890s in California, Kansas, Texas, and Indian Territory and supplied industry and transportation with fuel and lubricants. Some Texas cities grew and flourished in the resulting oil boom. Increased settlement in new industries and commerce took a toll on the environment, resulting in the loss of native grasses, the clogging of rivers and streams, the pollution of soil and water, and deforestation. The Homestead Act of 1862 gave away 160-acre parcels of land for settlement, and when the Oklahoma Territory was opened in 1889, the entire territory was claimed by homesteaders within a day. 
Many settlers resented the railroad companies, which sold some of the land they received from the government for profit. Land speculators bought large tracts of public land and resold it to settlers at a higher price. Life as a homesteader in the West and on the plains was particular was and on the plains in particular was often difficult. Families worked long hours in difficult conditions and harsh climates. Severe weather, grasshopper invasions, and scarce water forced many settlers to return east. The second half of the 19th century saw a continual conflict between Native Americans and the U.S. government. Until about 1880, the U.S. government forced American Indians to give up their tribal lands and relocate to reservations, where they were allowed to hunt and keep their way of life. Native American resistance to this policy led to armed conflict. By 1880, U.S. policy shifted to one of assimilation. Reformers in the government attempted to Americanize Native peoples by sending American Indian children to boarding schools and by dividing up reservations into family-owned farm plots. The goal was to break up tribal structures. The reality of the old American West differs from the myths 20th century American popular country, culture has portrayed. The 1890 census shows that American West was so heavily settled that in effect the frontier was closed. In 1893, Frederick Jackson Turner delivered a paper in which he argued the western frontier had shaped a uniquely American culture. And don't forget to take the quiz, the 7.03 quiz, take that when you have reviewed the first three lessons of this unit and then you can move on to 7.05 new industries emerge good luck on your quiz